Okay, <coughs> welcome to my talk today on improving performance for security enabled web services. Okay, so the main focus of my talk is uh, going to be about Apache CXF. I'm going to give a brief introduction to Apache CXF. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, WS security in CXF and the improvements that we're doing for the 3.0.0 release uh, with a focus on performance. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about securing attachments in CXF, uh, some new functionality that we've done there. Um, I'm going to talk about some improvements we've done for RESTful security in CXF3. Finally, I'm going to give some empir empirical data for some of these improvements that we've done. And then finally, I'm going to talk about uh, single sign-on. Okay, so I gave this earlier, so brief introduction to myself. I work at Talent. Um, my interests are in security across a, a range of Apache projects. Um, today I'm going to talk about CXF and also the WS security functionality, which is in the Sanctuary and Web Services uh, projects. Okay, so a brief introduction to Apache CXF, uh, just in case people aren't familiar with it. Um, Apache CXF is one of the leading web services frameworks. Um, very heavily used. Um, in particular, I'm going to talk about two of the front-end APIs today, JaxWiz and JaxRS, so for web services and RESTful web services. It supports a huge range of protocols. So I'm going to talk about SOAP mainly, um, Corba, etc. Huge range of transports. Uh, CXF is renowned for very good uh, WS standard support. So these are the OASIS standards um, based around security. So we got WS security, security policy, WS trust, and then things like WS reliable messaging. Uh, we've got very good support for Spring and CXF. Uh, we also ship a, a set of security services. So we have an SGS, a security token service. Uh, so this is a service that we can use to um, issue tokens and can be used in terms of single sign-on. So I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, we have an XKMS service. So this is used to distribute keys, a centralized uh, key management system that uses SOAP. We have a, a sub-project called FIDIS, which is a single sign-on solution uh, based around WS Federation. So we use that to talk to um, <coughs> the Microsoft clients. And finally, CXF, it's uh, renowned for very good OSGI support. So a brief bit about the history of CXF. It was founded in 2006 as a merger of the XFIRE project on Codehouse and Celtics, which was an Iona project. Um, top level, it started in the incubator. The top level project releases go from 2.0 to 6 to the current releases that you can see there. It's a very active project. Uh, we have 35 committers, 22 PMC members uh, across a wide range of companies. Uh, as I said earlier, it's very heavily used. We're embedded in a set of Apache projects, such as Apache Syncope. So we use that for the RESTful interface. Apache Syncope is an identity management solution at Apache. Apache Camel, Apache Tommy E, several other products. And it's very, very heavily used in industry products as well. Uh, many of these companies have committers on the uh, CXF project. OK, so just very briefly, I'm going to talk about JaxWiz and JaxRS, uh, given that I'm going to be talking about how to secure these, these things. So JaxWiz is a web service. Typically, we define it by a WSDL document. So this is an XML document that describes how you can talk to uh, this web service. Um, we can generate Java code via kind of a WSDL to Java functionality, and then use this to implement your, your service logic. Alternatively, we can start with uh, code and use annotations on the code instead of uh, starting with a WSDL document. Typically, we use uh, SOAP binding uh, over HTTP. With SOAP, we have um, a SOAP body, which contains the payload, and then the header contains, contains the service metadata. So very simple example of the SOAP envelope. Here we have a single SOAP header, which is this truncated uh, WS addressing header. And in the body, you can see the payload of our requests. Uh, so this is a favorite example of mine, uh, the doublet web service. Briefly, JaxRS. So this is using the REST paradigm. Uh, my colleague Sergey will talk about uh, the support for JaxRS 2.0 tomorrow in CXF. Uh, similarly, we can use Waddle to define the service, but typically we use code and annotations. Um, we can marshal and marshal the requests and responses using JaxB. 
and typically messages are in XML or JSON format. And an example I stole from the CXF wiki of how you might annotate your service class um, in terms of REST. So we have a customer service path at the top produces XML, and you can see the various methods have HTTP, HTTP verbs associated with them, such as get or post or whatever. Um, and we have a get customer method which produces JSON, which overrides the top level XML uh, annotation. OK, so let's talk about WS security and how we can improve performance in CXS 3.0.0. So WS Security, um, as I said earlier, it's a set of Oasis specifications, uh, seven or eight specifications. Um, it has a number of different goals. So I've broken them down into three. Well, there's three essential goals of WS Security. Message confidentiality. So making sure that if we're not using the transport binding, that we can secure messages at the XML encryption, using XML encryption. Similarly, message integrity, make sure that um, Somebody can't alter a request with XML signature. And then finally, client authentication via tokens. So uh, we can use username tokens. So this is the username password in the SOAP header of, of the request. Uh, we can use Kerberos. We can use SAML. Um, SAML uh, you can use SAML for authentication. Or also, if you embed roles in the token, <coughs> you can use it for authorization. Similarly, we can auth authenticate clients using asymmetric signature uh, and so on. So a brief example of a, what a secured SOAP envelope might look like. Um, so here we have in the SOAP header, you can see a security header. So this contains the security metadata of the request. Here we have an encrypted key. Uh, so when you're using XML encryption to secure a request, you uh, generate a session key, and then you typically encrypt that session key using the public key of the recipient. Uh, so, for example, you might combine this with our XKMS service to get the public key of the recipient so that the client doesn't need to uh, manage uh, public keys. Um, the encrypted key structure, you can see it's got an encrypted method, what, what it uses to encrypt the, um, the secret key. Um, it's got a reference to the public key. This is a key identifier reference. Uh, it's got the encrypted payload. And then typically we reference what the key was used to encrypt so in the SOAP body here, we have our encrypted data. And again, the encryption method here is an arithmetic algorithm, uh, AES. OK, so that's WS security. WS security policy is, is a set of, is a specification that builds on WS security um, via a WS policy expression. OK, so if you embed the policy in WSDL, uh, a service can publish its security requirements uh, to clients. So the cool thing about WS security policy is it, uh, it's a standard way of expressing security requirements. So rather than having all these ad hoc solutions. And then also, it's used to configure security. So a client or a, ser or a service, they don't actually need to specify what to do in, in code or by some custom way. All you actually need to supply it with is things like usernames and passwords and uh, what keys to use for signature and so on and so forth. And the other cool thing about it is that uh, when a client sends a request to a service, it can validate it against uh, a WS security policy. So it takes that kind of validation step away from um, some kind of custom way of doing things. Very brief, truncated example. Here's an example of a WS security policy. Um, this is a transport binding. So this means, so if a, if a, if a service endpoint has this uh, policy in effect, it means that the request m must come in over TLS. Um, it has an include timestamp uh, policy, which means that uh, a timestamp must be included in the security header. So this can be used to um, typically timestamps are configured with a, with a, a three minute lifetime, um, or sorry, five minute lifetime. So if requests are longer than this, they uh, get rejected. We have an algorithm suite. So this defines the set of uh, security algorithms that you might use for signature and encryption. Um, next, we have a supporting tokens policy. So in this case, we have a username uh, token. OK, so essentially what this policy says is that uh, to communicate successfully with this service, you need to uh, send a request over TLS, and the client must be authenticated by username password in the security header of the request. OK, so WS Security at Apache, um, there are a number of different projects. 
Um, Apache Sanctuario is the XML signature and XML encryption standard or reference impl implementation in Java. Um, we have Apache WSS3J, which is the WS security layer that builds on top of the XML signature encryption functionality in Sanctuario. So this provides um, specifically using these to secure SOAP requests and responses. And then finally, on top of that, we have the actual web service stacks, such as Apache CXF and Apache Access. Um, so these uh, build on WSS3J again to include things like WS security policy support, uh, WS trust, WS secure conversation, et cetera. Okay, so let's get into the meat of the uh, performance issues. Um, so this is um, a quick graph that I did uh, using Dennis Oznowski's, uh, <laughs> I took your uh, source code from, Dennis wrote an article about performance. It's uh, quite a old now, but I, I took a source code and I updated it to use the latest version of CXF. I just ran some tests on my machine. So what we're looking at here is, I just took two examples, a plain text, uh, message. This is a simple SOAP request um, for small messages and large messages. And then the orange is it's signed and encrypted using uh, WS security. And then the Y axis is uh, the time in seconds to make a thousand requests. So as you can see for small requests, okay, there's a large performance penalty I would say. And for, for large requests, there's a huge performance penalty. So the reason I've said a familiar problem is that um, I think it's a problem faced by many projects when you apply security to something, it slows it down. Okay, so security is expensive. And in particular, given that we're talking about SOAP messages, uh, WS security is particularly uh, expensive. So there are a number of reasons uh, behind this. Um, partially, it's just the work involved in, in asymmetric cryptography. So if you're signing and encrypting, you're using an asymmetric algorithm such as RSA to sign the request, you've got to generate your session key using a random source, use that to encrypt the payload, and then use an asymmetric encryption algorithm such as RSA again to encrypt the secret key. So that's a lot of cryptographic work. But a huge part is that uh, WS security processing in all these Apache projects, um, well, Access does something slightly different, but the, it uses DOM. So DOM is essentially when you're working with XML, you load everything into memory. So it's very fast once you get it into memory, but for large requests, uh, it's quite slow. Um, another thing is that Apache CXF is a streaming enabled stack. So you've got a double performance penalty when you're using WS security because not only do you have to deal with the slowness of DOM, you also have to convert the streaming request into DOM in the first place. So a natural question springs from that is, wouldn't it be cool if we could actually work with a streaming version of WS security um, rather than this DOM approach? Um, we've done bits and pieces in the past, but, but it, the problem seems so difficult that uh, we never really made much headway with it. Um, so like I say here, it would solve the problem of these large memory requirements and also of having to make this conversion to DOM. So 2011, um, a Swiss developer called Mark Giger. He um, contacted Apache about donating his SWSSF project. So this was a streaming WS security prototype based on WS S3J. So um, it used almost exactly the same configuration, except it used a streaming stacks based approach for WS security. Okay, so uh, he contacted, I think, the incubator mailing list at Apache about creating a new project based on, on this. But when we talked to him, we realized that it would be much better if we just submitted this new functionality to the existing projects. So that's what we've done. So after he, he donated the code to Apache, uh, we moved the XML signature and encryption functionality to Apache Santuario. Uh, so that kind of maps nicely with the existing functionality that's in that project. And that will be released in Apache Santuario 2.0.0, which uh, will be released in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the WS security parts uh, have been added to Apache WS S3J, and we used, that, um, we used this uh, opportunity to put out a new major release. So again, this will hopefully happen in the next month or so. So WS S3J now has two, two full WS security stacks. One is the older one based on DOM, um, and one based on this new streaming approach. So you can use either. Um, We've fully integrated this new streaming approach into CXF. 
and a focus on, well, given that Mark based it on WSS 3J, it was quite easy to keep very similar functionality. So if you use uh, WS Security and CXF, you'll use it in two, two ways. You'll either use what we call an action-based approach, where you don't use security policy, but you just tell the code what to do, so sign the SOAP body and add a username token, or you'll use it with WS Security policy. So if you're using it with just the WS Security approach, we've got two new interceptors, uh, rather than WSS for J out and in interceptor, we have a stacks out and in interceptor. So literally, if you want, if you're using this, these interceptors in your project, all you need to do is just change the name of the interceptor, and all of the configuration is pretty much identical. So I think this is quite cool. With WS security policy, <coughs> um, all you supply to it is, is things like usernames and passwords. Uh, so here what we've done is we've added a new Boolean uh, JAXWIS property, so WS security enable streaming. Um, so all you need to do to uh, use the streaming stack is just set this to true. Um, so it's pretty cool. No other configuration needed to use this new stack. Just enable a single Boolean property on your clients and your endpoints. Um, <coughs> we've, we've left that Boolean property as false for CXF 3.0.0. .0 .0. Um, so this is because, well, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the DOM approach, as you'll see in my benchmarks, it's uses far less, it uses far more memory, but it's still slightly more performant depending on your scenario. And also, just for backwards compatibility reasons, we didn't, we want to um, have people use this and try it out and fix bugs before we enable it by default in the future, hopefully in CXF 3.1 maybe. Another cool new feature, uh, performance feature, I guess, of this work is in terms of validating requests against policies. So um, currently with the DOM-based code, what happens is WS, WSS3J processes a request and it stores the set of security results. And then CXF will go through all of the WS security policies that are applicable. It'll evaluate the results against the policies and then it'll um, mark the policies as uh, valid or invalid. So what the Strax implementation does is um, it does the inverse approach. So basically CXF hands off the, hands off the WS security policy, policies themselves to WSS3J and uh, security events are generated during processing. And if a security event does not match any of the applicable possible policies, um, it just throws an exception there and then. So this is quite neat. Um, firstly, it, well, it's more resistant to denial of service types of attacks. Okay, so in the, with the old approach, uh, WSS4J would completely process the message before policy validation failed, whereas here it fails at a far earlier stage in the processing. Is quite, which is quite nice. Okay, so I'm going to present some empir empirical results in a few minutes. Um, the streaming approach, as you might suspect, uses far less memory for large requests. Um, so at the moment, if you, if you have a service that's handling a huge amount of requests, this should be more efficient than the older DOM code. So it performed better in some scenarios at the moment and worse than others. Um, the DOM code has been around for the guts of 10 years. Uh, and it's, it's reasonably heavily optimized, so um, the streaming code is not so heavily optimized. So that's a focus for the next couple of minor releases to, um, to work on optimizing it so that it at least matches, if not surpasses, the DOM code in the common scenarios. Okay, so briefly, what's not supported? Um, like WS security with the streaming approach is very difficult, so there, we couldn't do everything. Uh, XPath evaluation uh, is not supported. Um, so in WS security policy, um, you can specify what elements must be signed or encrypted using an XPath expression. So we only support very simple expressions with the streaming code um, because of the difficulty in finding a streaming XPath implementation. And it's not really heavily used anyway. Uh, strict layout validation, this is a technical thing. You can skip that for the moment. And then finally, we don't support certain policy combinations, so we don't support two separate encryption actions. So I'll give an example here of two policies and two separate signature actions with some exceptions. Um, but I think we cover 90% of the use cases, if not more, in the release. Finally, with WSS4J 2.0.0, just apart from the new streaming approach, uh, we took the opportunity to make a few other changes um, because it's a new major release. Um, we have a WS security policy model, so we've moved this from CXF into WSS3J um, because it's used by the uh, policy validation code of the um, streaming code. 
Uh, we have support for securing message attachments that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, we have support for caching based on EH cache. So previously uh, we, had, we had support for caching but only really at an interface level. And we've basically moved the caching, the actual proper caching stuff from CXF into WSS4J and it's all enabled by default. So caching in this scenario, it's basically to uh, prevent against replay attacks. So you might cache username token nonces to make sure that people can't capture a message and send it again. And then finally, a uh, minor feature is we can encrypt passwords. So crypto property files are what we use to uh, uh, specify key stores. And previously, uh, the password in the crypto property file couldn't be encrypted. So we use JSIFT here. OK, so securing attachments. So prior to this next release of CXF, we didn't support signing or encrypting message attachments at all. Uh, WSS4J supports um, another of the WS security specs, which is the SOAP messages with, with attachments profile. Um, so basically, if you're using WS security policy and you've got attachments, you can just add this SP attachments policy to the, to, uh, the signed or encrypted parts, and all your attachments will automatically be secured. Um, there's policies also to if you only want to sign the content or if you want to include the attachment headers. So here's an example. So this is for uh, encrypted, an encrypted attachment. Um, so again, you've got your SOAP envelope. This is my encrypted data in the security header. And we have this special transform, which is an attachment ciphertext transform that basically tells the processing code that it's the, um, the attachment itself that's uh, encrypted. And then my attachment down here, and you can see the, that's the binary encrypted uh, data here. Um, using MTOM, so this is something we've, that's in discussion at the moment. Um, currently, if you use MTOM with WS security, attachments are inlined and put in the SOAP body. Um, we're working on supporting this for the next release. At this point, it's, un it's unclear whether, um, whether this is actually efficient to do this or not but we'll see. Um, I'll talk about a minor efficiency gain as well. Let's skip that for a moment. OK, RESTful security in CXF. So my colleague Sergey has done a marvelous job on, um, on security with Jack's arrest in CXF. And one of the things uh, he worked on was um, supporting XML signature and encryption. So you've got your REST client and endpoint. You've got an XML message, and you want to use XML signature encryption. Um, so uh, you've got three options for XML signature. I'll okay, demonstrate this in a second. So this is where you put the signature in the message. We have separate interceptors, so CXF interceptors for signature and encryption, and you can chain them in whatever way you want. And then using XML uh, signature with, uh, say, with uh, public key infrastructure and X5 and 9 certificate, it gives you an alternative to um, username, password, or whatever over TLS for client authentication. So here's, an, here's a sample of the book object that we're sending as part of a JAX request request. Um, and you can see the XML signature is appended as the last child of the book element. And you can see the enveloped signature transform. So basically, when you're processing that, it strips the signature out of the signature calculation. OK, so in terms of performance, we've adapted <coughs> uh, this JAX REST functionality in CXF to use this new streaming approach. Uh, similar to the WSS4J WS security approach, we got two new interceptors, XML sec out and in. Um, the difference with the uh, older code is that we now have a single interceptor rather than a separate one for signature and encryption. Uh, we support only one use case for XML signature. Um, and I give a test case here, which I haven't actually uploaded yet, but I'll do it this week. OK, empirical data. OK, so these are a set of benchmarks that we generated in Apache Sanctuario. So this is just for XML signature and encryption, um, not for combining it as part of a SOAP request or whatever. But, uh, it's to give you an idea. So there's two set of um, data, memory consumption and timing. I'm just presenting memory consumption here. Uh, so this is for encryption. So this is the act of taking an XML document and encrypting it using XML encryption. Uh, the x-axis is the number of XML start elements. So this is to give you an idea about how it scales as you increase the size of the document you're working with. And the y-axis is the amount of memory in megabytes that's used by the process. Uh, the green line is the DOM code, so that's the older code, and stacks is the red streaming code. So as you can see, for uh, XML encryption, memory usage is totally flat for the streaming approach, whereas it 
scales hugely for the DOM code. So you can see how if you're deploying this in a service, you, you might get huge benefits uh, in terms of memory consumption. This is the same, but for decryption. So you can see that the same holds. The streaming case is totally flat memory consumption. Signature creation. So this is the only one where the, um, where the memory consumption for the streaming code isn't flat. Uh, the reasons for this is that you've got to cache, when you're um, signing something, you've got to cache the stuff as you're going along. So it does increase per size of the request for the streaming code. And the, finally, for signature verification, again, as per the first two use cases, uh, memory usage is totally flat. So in terms of if anybody's actually using this stuff with large requests, I would definitely recommend checking this out to see if it per performs better than the uh, older DOM code. OK, last thing I'm going to talk about is single sign-on. OK, so <clears throat> we've only focused on securing requests. Um, so the costs associated with signing or encrypting at the message level. Uh, but client authentication can, al can also be expensive. So you've got your username and password. You send it off to your directory or whatever for authentication. Um, so we can use single sign-on. So basically, well, there's a couple of definitions. But here I'm just giving a definition of the client signs on to some authentication service and retains a token uh, to use for subsequent auth authentications. OK, so I've created a set of test cases um, in GitHub. Um, so my, my aim was to kind of show how you might use CXF with various third-party libraries, um, because it's something that I felt wasn't well documented. Um, and I'm going to give three use cases here. So for each, of the, for each of the use cases, there's like an authentication test, an authorization test, and a single sign-on test. So this is just a quite a cool way of doing single sign-on that I was playing around with that mightn't be all that well known is um, if you use something called WS Secure Conversation. So this involves um, a, a negotiation step with an STS, a security token service that's embedded with a CXF endpoint. So the client authenticates and retains a token, and they uses it in, a, in any subsequent request. Um, because the STS is embedded with the CXF endpoint, it doesn't involve any calls to any remote services. So I think it's, it's a really cool way of doing SSO if you've got a simple use case. A more advanced uh, way of doing things is to use the security token service, such as the one we ship in CXF. Um, so typically, in this case, the client will authenticate to the STS. It'll get back a SAML token. And then the client will cache that token and reuse it uh, in all subsequent requests until the token expires, in which case it can either renew the token or it'll get a new one. Um, and we can also use this for authorization if the STS puts uh, roles and claims into the token. Um, SAML SSO. So we support SSO via the SAML SSO web profile. This is for JAX or S clients. Uh, so we have a filter which redirects a client to an IDP. The client uh, authenticates there and is redirected back to the service. Uh, we store the authenticated state as a cookie. And again, we can, uh, we can, if we can put roles in the SAML assertion, we can use it for uh, authorization. So just quickly, okay, I'm not going to go into running the tests, but um, I encourage anyone who's interested in this stuff to play around with. Um, if you go to my, it's, well, it's referenced in the, in the slides, but if you go to my GitHub repo, I have a couple of Apache test cases. So I've got uh, XML signature streaming test cases for Sanctuario. Specifically for CXF, I have a number of test cases. So I have a CXF LDAP. This just shows how you can use a Apache directory to authenticate and authorize a username password based request. Um, here I've got a SAML SSO. I'll look at this in a bit more detail in a second. Here I'm using Shiro, so Apache Shiro. There have been a few talks in Shiro today to authenticate and authorize with CXF. Uh, Spring Security, so an, an alternative to that. Uh, here I use the CXF STS uh, to um, use single sign on. And then finally, I'm using Apache Syncope, which is an identity management solution. So you're passing off uh, the username password to the identity management solution for uh, authentication. OK, so this is a SAML SSO uh, test case I put up. Um, I'm not going to go through it, but it's the one thing I want to show, that, which I think is really cool. Okay, so. OK, so if we look at one of the other projects, um, all of the projects, I uh, use this kind of double thing that I've talked about. So we get this double at WSDL. Um, so I'm just going to look at the. Oh, 
Okay, so we have this really simple doublet um, uh, thing in, in my WSDL. Here's my implementation, and here's my doublet operation. And it just takes in the number to double and returns double number, okay? So you can see these annotations at the top of the class. So these are Jack's Wiz annotations. So this is my Jack's Wiz classical SOAP request, SOAP response stuff, okay? And what you can do in CXF, which I think is extremely cool, is this is my SAML SSO test case. So um, this is my Spring configuration. This is my CXF JAX RS server. And what um, I'm doing here is I'm linking to the model, model class. So if you look at this model class, this is a way of converting, this is a way of setting up my JAX RS endpoint. I'm referencing the same JAX with implementation here, yet I'm attaching this model to show how to, how to map a uh, REST request and response to this uh, service endpoint implementation. So this kind of approach allows you to uh, take your existing JAX with functionality and endpoints and stick a JAX RS front end on top of it, which I think is really cool. Okay, so that's it. So I'll take any questions if anybody has any. Yeah, it depends on the scenario. So, um, like, it can even depend on stuff like uh, if you have CPU frequency scaling enabled or disabled. Sometimes one will be faster than the other. Um, yeah, Mark told me that the he mainly focused on the inbound case. So the outbound case is not as efficient. Um, so one thing I really want to do is just look at the common use cases and try to make sure they're a bit more efficient. Um, so yeah, I'd be hopeful that we can at least match the older use cases in terms of timing performance. So with the lower memory usage, uh, you're always going to have a lot of less garbage collection. Uh, there's no evidence of that. But, uh, and when you're just doing a single thread of a time of time system where you're just logging it, you're not going to hit. But can you deploy it to ESC where you're going to have 50 times the time that you don't want forever and you're going to have the phone? Yeah, I guess so. I haven't tried it, but like it just takes the XML stream reader from CXF and wraps it with one that's in Apache Santuario, so it should work. Yeah, See. it's a nice change because uh, previously if you had an XML node that was too big, So I'll let you answer that. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, so this. Yep, thank you.